Today we're unboxing this generator and going through all the steps you need to get it set up and ready to go. And as you can see, this comes with everything you need inside the box except for gasoline. And this is Champion's new 4650 watt generator that runs at basically 30.4 amps. So we're going to get this thing set up and ready to go. So first thing we need to do is get it right out of the box. So we'll go over all the items that it comes with. We'll get this thing out and make sure you keep the box just in case you have to return it. So as we take a look at all the stuff inside, you can see it already comes with an oil, an oil funnel. It also comes with a little tool kit, the key fob that remotely starts it, and also an owner's manual, which you should read. And as we take a look at this brand new generator, you can see it does have wireless remote start. And this thing is also RV rated, so it has an RV plug already on it. And so we'll basically go over some of the features on this in just a minute. But first, got to finish getting it set up. So you can see here on this blue tag, the first thing we got to do is take off the shipping nuts that are on the bottom. And if you want to really just kind of get this thing started, go through the quick start guide. It has all the information to basically get it going. But don't forget to read that owner's manual because it does have some good tips in it that you should read. So first thing we'll do is we'll get this generator and we'll just tip it up on its back. And this is when you want to do this before you put the oil in so you don't worry about that oil going somewhere it shouldn't. Those four orange tabs are what we need to pull off. Those nuts are actually already loose, but except the one, so I did pull it off with a 10 millimeter socket. So you can see there, they basically just come right off. We'll get rid of all four of the orange tabs and basically just discard those. Don't worry about the studs. Those things will just stay in place. Let's go ahead and rock that generator back down and we'll continue setting up. Now this generator does have a battery door on the front of it, but there's very little room in there to really do anything. So we need to go through the side panel and that's just an eight millimeter socket or either a Phillips head screwdriver. So we'll go ahead and remove that panel. And now you can see you have plenty of room to access the motor and to get to those battery cables. That one there is the one that goes up to the generator and this one here is the one that goes directly to the battery. It's not a bad idea to actually check the voltage to see if it does need to be charged because putting a load on a low voltage battery can prematurely damage it. So mine's ready to go so we'll just hit that quick connect real quick and we'll connect it like so. We'll take those little protective caps and we'll just go ahead and plug them into each other. It's a good place to keep them safe. And while we're here we might as well take a look at and familiarize ourselves like where the spark plug is or your air box which is down below if you guys ever have to do a little service on here. It's not a bad idea just to get familiar with it. You'll see your air filter is right there and this is pre-oiled so some of the other generators I have seen they are pretty dry. And uh, so go ahead and get that little tab back on the bottom, snap that guy into place, make sure it's nice and fully seated. And another thing I want to show you just above that on the charcoal canister are some directions. It actually shows you how to open and close your choke manually. And the reason you have this is basically if your battery happens to be dead, your choke's not going to automatically work. So this gives you the option to still at least choke it if you need to. So we'll go ahead and put on this panel. We're going to go ahead and move to the other side here in just a second. We'll put both of our screws back in. And then we'll move to the other side to basically fill up the oil and we'll go over a few things on that side as well. So on this side you can see it does have an oil access panel. This basically allows you to check your oil levels or either do your services. A little notation card here that shows you how much oil you need and the correct weight. And it does come with an, a, basically a drain tube which I do like on these newer generators. So that does make servicing a little bit easier. And so while we're here, we might as well go ahead and pop off this panel as well so we can get a little bit more familiar and it'll just give us a little bit more working room. So first thing you got to do is just take out those two screws like the other side and rotate that panel up out of the way and the pull cord will just hold it in place. And now as we take a look at this side, I can already tell who makes this engine. It's very popular. It's a Rado Engineering 212cc and you can see there on the little stamp. So this guy's been around in quite a few of the other generators I've been playing with and seems to be so far pretty popular and reliable. All right, we'll continue on, get this guy set up. So this little oil card does give you a little bit of information, but we're just going to go ahead and get the oil in. And one thing you do want to check is to make sure they didn't put too much oil in it. When they ship these things, they don't always take the oil out, or at least all of it. This one does have some in it. So if you noticed, if you do just go ahead and put all of the oil in, well, you're going to make a big mess. So after taking a look inside, I can already tell that there's probably a well, quarter full. So we'll go ahead and basically add the oil in, but only do it about maybe a quarter of a quarter at a time, just in case if you want to take it slow. It's better to just take your time than versus making a mess. So we'll just add a little bit more, checking periodically to see if it's full. And then after you do get it up to the threads, which I'll show you here in just a second, that right there is basically what you're looking for. You want the oil up either at the bottom of the threads or halfway up the threads, and you're basically good to go. And you can see how much oil I have left, and this is why you just don't want to pour it all in. 
We'll go ahead and replace that dipstick. And then one other thing I do want to show you, just because when it comes to manufacturing and attention to detail, you see that particular hose clamp. Well, that pinch clamp, you have to pinch that with a pair of pliers. And with that motor mount in the way, well, you basically can't get that thing off. So this is just me being nitpicky, but sometimes I find things like that are a little bit annoying if I do have to service anything. Another thing, too, is that if you do drain the oil out of this guy, make sure that on the cap you still have that little black o-ring if that guy is missing it can tend to leak a little bit and you want to make sure that that cap twists and snaps all the way because sometimes when it's sitting right there and the generator vibrates and runs it'll pop up like that halfway unlock it and then you can get a little bit of oil seepage to come out of this thing so you can see right there it kind of popped loose a little bit so just something to take note of so we'll go ahead and reinstall the side panel here and you gotta get your two eight millimeter screws again. And if you are gonna use a cordless drill while doing this, make sure that you use your clutch, have it on a very low torque setting. Mine's on only about three to four. And you wanna basically put the screws in in reverse first and then go forward. That'll help seat the screws so you don't strip it. So while we're here, we'll take a look at the features real quick. Like right under here, a 30 amp RV plug. Right next to that, you'll see 120 volt plugs as well. And basically this generator has weather protection caps on everything, which I do like to see, including those parallel ports down below with a grounding lug that is right next to it. And if you take a look next to that guy, a 12 volt socket, and this does come with USB ports that they provide you in that toolkit. Your battery on off switch that gives you that power to allow your easy start or your uh, remote start as well. And also that little orange button does your quick start for you. And along with the little LCD panel above, kind of has some information that we'll kind of go over as far as some of these little buttons and what they do. So before we add any gas to it, we'll go ahead and just do a wait for fun, just to kind of see how much this generator weighs. And this one pretty much comes out on the average where most of them weigh empty with no fuel, but you do have a battery and oil in it. And at 101 pounds, you can see this generator comes out pretty average for weight. And while you guys are here, make sure you smash that like button for me if you liked the video. And be sure to subscribe so you don't miss any other content. And ring that bell, that way you'll be notified the next time a video comes out. And also one other tip is to make sure you guys use a fuel conditioner like this Lucas Oil Treatment. I do like this stuff a lot. I'm not sponsored by them. I've just happened to have good luck with it. All right, so we'll continue filling up the generator. And now that we got that done, we'll just kind of clean up real quick. And we'll go ahead and get this guy fired off. Now, I will admit I did already have this running up earlier, but I did compromise that video, so I had to kind of reshoot it. And my apologies for that. So we'll go ahead and hit that on button, which will turn on your battery for the electric start. We'll rotate your dial to the green side. And then one thing with this generator is that you do have to hit that little choke button manually. And now that you do that, go ahead and fire up the generator like so. And this guy actually didn't even need the choke because it was just on a few minutes ago. And so now that this is on and running, you basically have to turn off that choke manually, just like so. And away it goes, now you're kind of ready to run. And when this generator does fire up, one thing to note is that it does go on to eco mode automatically, whether you do the push button start or if you happen to use a remote start. And if you want to turn the eco off, you just hit that little button like so. The one above it is basically a reset for overload. And as we look at the display up there, basically what you're looking at is at how many hertz is on the generator. This is a 60 hertz like most of them. And then you're going to look at your estimated runtime for fuel and the amount of load that's on it. That there is going to show you your total runtime that the generator has. And then it recycles again and that basically goes to voltage right there. So, And one other thing we'll look at is this little button there for your remote key fob. If you do want to program another one, that's how you would do it. Um, there is kind of a little uh, instructional way that you do that if you have to get another one. And so we'll go ahead and shut down the generator with the key fob real quick. And so now when you guys see this thing basically work with the key fob, and you do have to have the battery on and you do have to have the dial rotated, but this does automatic choke when you use the key fob, which I kind of wish the generator just did that automatically anyway, and you didn't have to use the choke uh, by pushing the button on and off, just like the key fob. The choke will work automatically and then you don't have to really mess with it so i kind of found that a little bit different anyway we'll go ahead and get some of the testing underway we're going to go ahead and start off with a sound check real quick and so when you fire up the generator it does go to eco mode automatically so that's where we're going to start and so with it out front here with the concrete and kind of no obstructions i kind of get a real good consistent sound reading so after letting this run for a little bit and kind of getting an average it's basically about 59 decibels give or take just a little bit at 23 feet and so now we'll go ahead and just turn off that eco mode just to kind of see where this guy runs while it's a little bit louder 
And this is all pretty common numbers for generators of this size. When you get into these ones that are, you know, 4,000, 4,500, they're all running right around here. Um, even the 3,500 watt generators and such. The one that really still is remarkably quiet is the Predator, and that's one reason it is so popular. But um, anyway, so we'll go ahead and move on. And just to kind of test the remote key fob, um, I decided to walk down the street a little bit and you can kind of see how far I am. This one's rated for well, 80 feet. You can see it started it and we're probably at about 175 feet, give or take a little bit. And so now we'll kind of see how far back I can go. I'm going to move back another 20 feet or so and then we'll go ahead and see if we can shut the generator off from back here. So as I step back a little bit, go ahead and press that button. As you can hear, it's still kind of running, so maybe a long press. See how that does, kind of see if it works for fun. And obviously this is line of sight, there's nothing in the way. I mean, if you were at a campground or somewhere else, you'd probably be a lot closer, maybe inside your trailer, so it shouldn't have any problems, but still not working from here. So we'll go a little bit closer, almost back to where we were. And well, it looks like one more press. All right, there it goes, finally shuts down, so. All right, so we're going to go ahead and review the specs real quick before we start our load test. And this generator is basically rated at 30.4 amps. And you can see what our running watts is at 3,650. So we'll take a peek at that as we kind of get this load test going and kind of see where we end up. So I'm going to put a little meter down here on the left that'll see the generator and a little meter that I kind of made just to give us an idea kind of what's going on. We're going to use my travel trailer as kind of a testing facility here. And this is a 30 amp service trailer. And basically a lot of times what I'll use is like that little heater. That guy there is great. If you don't have one, I'll put a link in the description. And basically, so we're going to go over here and turn on some lights real quick in the AC unit. And you can see I'm already drawing about two amps. And that's the converter charging the battery currently. So we're going to go ahead now and turn on the AC unit. This is going to go on high. And then basically it'll turn on the fan first. And then the compressor will come on and I have that set all the way low. And so now the fan is on and that's a 15,000 K unit. It doesn't have an easy start, soft start or anything like that. So we'll keep an eye on the meter, watch for that thing to jump up in a second. Then we'll kind of add some other loads like this heater. This is 1500 watts and we'll get that guy going in a second as well. All right, boom. So there goes the compressor on the AC unit. So now that guy's up and running, blowing some cold air. And there's a little battery monitor that I have so when I'm out dry camping I can keep track of where my battery is and I'll put a little link in the description some information about that as well if you want to check it out. All right so now what we'll do we'll also use this microwave to provide us a little bit more load. We're going to turn that on six minutes. Basically that's going to be another old you know 10 11 amps so now we have the AC running we have the microwave going and if you look at the generator light already that guy's pretty much maxed out as it is. So we're already at 30 amps. And, and again, another thing too is that it is hot outside. It's about 100 degrees, so everything is working a little bit harder. Um, and again, if you wanted to save yourself a little bit of power, you could turn off your converter, maybe save a couple amps. But since this thing is fully loaded, we're gonna go ahead and do a sound check real quick on it as well in the backyard. And when I do this back here, I try to be consistent on where I put the generator and the sound meter. That way when I compare other generators, just to kind of see where it is. And so far, the quietest one, again, was the Predator. It was probably running right about 7,300. Um, I have ran like little Hondas and, and other ones, and they all run pretty much right here, 74, 75. So just to kind of give you guys an idea where they all run when they're fully loaded. But most of the time, you should never run your generator like this anyway. So we'll go ahead and get this 1500 watt heater. We're gonna use this as a little bit more load that we're gonna put on the generator. And that guy basically is about well, 650, watts right here so we'll turn that guy on and keep it on the meter and wow look at that voltage drop that's actually quite a bit more than i thought it would go and bang look at that generator already shuts off and that's about it so the generator topped out at uh, above 33 amps and basically it, it gave us everything that it needed to do it gave us 30 and a half amps it did fine just there and anything over that it basically said no way so Another thing I want to show you here too is that that's just a reset button and make sure all your stuff is off if you have it on the trailer. But other than that, that's basically about it. Let me know what you guys think down in the comments down below. 